Welcome everybody to our brand new series called Fixing Matches with iBuyPower. Every two weeks, we're going to sit down with the different CS Pro and ask them any questions we want. And along with that, we're going to give them clips to review that all of you guys submit of some of your best or worst CS2 gameplay. They're going to review it, critique it, and maybe even offer you guys some helpful advice. And also, I want to give a huge shout out to iBuyPower for partnering up with us throughout the entirety of this series. Without them, we couldn't make this happen. And with them, I cannot wait to see how many different pro players and clip submissions we can go through. And speak of the devil, they also have a ton of pre builts for you guys to choose from, which are optimized for the best CS2 gameplay. If you want to check those out, and along with that, well, it's their 24th anniversary. So, what better way to celebrate than us partnering up with them to bring you guys some great CS2 content? I truly can't wait. It's going to be a fun series. Initiating barrel smoke. Barrel smoke initiated. Oh, no. Go okay, I would, I would just go back a little bit. So. <laughs> I think that this is a scrim, right? Like, this seems like a scrim. This is like a CSGO scrim. What is he even throwing right there? What is that? Is that a flash? Initiating yeah, barrel flash. smoke. Okay, um, if you if you are entering on T side, you do not want to be throwing nades as the entry. Like you should be throwing good flashes that somebody can actually use. If you're the front two spawns or whatever, and you call B rush, you should have armor, and the guys in the back should have flashes. So blue right now, well he's throwing he's throwing the heaven smoke, so probably orange. So orange probably should have had like a the nade set that he has and he should be doing two flashes to the right because right now the first guy has a full nade set no armor and he throws a random flash that nobody can actually use i would say that's the first critique of this and then he runs out monster here as you keep playing it he's gonna run out monster and then he's gonna plow out his nades so he goes for the initiated. And they, if you pause already, so if you're the entry, you need to be creating space. From you just coming out here, come to the right, and you go like a further angle, so you're getting less space, and you're not really like getting any contact on anybody, and you pull out your HE, you're the front guy that needs to be creating the space. So you're pulling out like a nade in the middle of the open. If somebody just peeks you, you're dying. Like you sure. only have that liberty to throw nades like that if the guy on the CT side can't just peek you for free and kill you. So are you and saying because... he should be pushing harder? Like pushing harder forward to create that space? Or what do you mean? Yeah. Exactly? Yeah, ideally he should not have had the nades in, so just to begin with, and he should be pathing close to the wall just so he can get out as fast as possible towards the pillar. So instead he has the nades, so he doesn't run forward. He goes to the back of the wall. He's not actually creating any space. And then he's going to end up pulling out like a nade in the middle of the open, which he could just die. Like we don't know if he's barrel or not right here. We have no idea because nobody went up there. Like there could be a guy tucked down with his head down in the barrel and we have no idea and he can just kill everybody. Go inside. In the smoke, I think. Oh, we didn't do the heaven smoke. That's not ideal. If you're gonna rush B, you probably want to do the heaven smoke instead of the mid side smoke, because otherwise you don't really have any uh, you don't really have any space to work with, and you have to like clear pit on this too. You see the problem that happened here because there was no space that was given. You you guys couldn't even advance out monster. You couldn't even get past the wood. Look, not even a single body got to the pillar because those like you should like as the guy that's playing here, you should have been the one that went close pillar, and you should have had the armor, and you probably would have had the jump because you would have been using the flashes. That's my <clears throat> one was. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> one was in the car. All right, how are we feeling so far? <laughs> I mean, it's now it's just gonna be a mess. Now it's just gonna be crazy. <laughs> They're just giving it away completely. But he's zoning them. You should have the other team gameplay. Oh, yeah. Heard all wrong. Let's fucking go, dude! Right, nice, man. Let's go. Oh, dude. Give me that. Capitalize on their mistakes. Let's go. Good stuff. In my opinion, I feel like Overwatch 2 had a really strong reception from pros, but a really awful reception from the majority of the community in casual standpoint, versus CS2 seems to have a much worse reception from pros and a good reception from casuals. Uh, do you have any like thoughts on why you feel like that happened? I think that people are just very, like, they're just very developer friendly for CS. Like people don't have like that same negative opinion where people just obviously don't like Blizzard for a lot of reasons but Valve has done a lot of good stuff over the years and we've had a very consistent, like stable game for many, many years. So I think that's like probably part of it. And I think that people probably enjoy that the matchmaking is getting somewhat of a rework, even if it's not positive right now. But I think the main reason also other than those points is just that I think people expect Valve to fix like this, the, the problems with the game eventually where they probably don't have that same belief in, in Blizzard. Good punish on the rear grass. He's holding. He knows the he knows the vent flash. Kind of crazy to do that by yourself. 
Yeah, but I think it seems like a pug, so I guess it's okay. But I mean, it's definitely it's definitely a little crazy to go for that kill, especially because the five v four, you There's just got the opening kill, and then you just like flash by yourself to go for a peek. Like you know the right flash. Like he's either the right flash here actually. So good on him. He knows the flash, but not by yourself five v four when you could have like there's you can't get every single thing. You could have immediately given a four v four right back. But good so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're already rotating. Good, he's waiting for his team now. All right, cut noise. Play contact all the way up. Bait me, I only have a fucking Glock and no armor. It's actually, actually not out. a bad call. It's actually good to, to do what he's saying here. Over here. Come, come, okay. come. I got a gun, I got a gun. All right, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna s Molly sandbags and then smoke. You can pause right now. So like yeah. right now, like you have to be super careful of people boosting. Usually in like the pro level, when you are up in this advantage in a 5v3, usually the CTs have to take a big risk where they have to just play for one side or the other. Either they're gonna play for A or they're gonna play for B. People really commonly will just leave B in mid because you know, you just have like the most common regression is towards A on this map because it's the easiest because the T's normally just end towards A. So a lot of people will either just do like a wall contact, clear the ramp, or they can do any boost. So I would have been more careful on the boost here. And also I would I would just be a little bit more cautious when jumping up on the sandbags, just just because of like that reaggress. Like they can peek you on the left. So just that so far. Not bad at all. I think yeah, that yeah, he needs a little bit more counter strafing on that sandbags because when a CT hears the molly, right? Like he hears himself about to get mollied. If you're just like standing still and you're aiming at the left side sandbags, he's going to actually kill you because if he just like runs out and he's pre-aimed at the sandbag, he's going to kill you before you even knew what happened. So you have to like make sure that like you're like ADAD, like making sure like your head's going like back and forth. So you're giving like a harder shot because if you're just like standing there, you're just going to die to somebody that's just swinging out of them. Like he, he has to run out of the molly, right? Not only like he has the jump because he knows when he's gonna take the timing and you have to react, but you're also giving him an easy shot because you're not moving at all. I'm sorry. I'm I'm no, like a cri I'm like a criminal offender. I'm a criminal <laughs> offender of just standing still so I can focus on yeah, shooting. Same, so I, same. I'm absolutely in that boat of like I will hold that sucker. <laughs> right, right, the whole thinking time. I'm that guy. Yeah, I mean especially on that headshot angle, like if you're moving, like just imagine if he's there. If you if he's there and you molly and he runs out of that molly, it's gonna be so hard for you to react. And if you're moving in a headshot angle, it's gonna be so much harder for him to kill you. Headshot, headshot. Go now. Uh, yeah, the molly is definitely in this, but that's okay. You can, you can learn the molly later. What? Nice. Well, I should have an op unless he traded his gun. Nice. Not bad overall. Yeah, that, I think he I think he had a lot less things for sure on this clip. Yeah, I, I, I was like, that was a pretty nice play, man. That was pretty freaking good. Where was your come up? Uh, when did you first actually like look at professional gaming like it could potentially be a career? Uh, When I was like six or seven. That's that's around then. That's when I was like wanting to go and play games professionally. You knew it like six or seven? That, that was like your that, aspiration? That I wanted to. Yeah, yeah. I was I wanted to be a pro ever since then. Ever since uh, I watched like StarCraft and like CPL. So I would watch like CPL and for CS and also was into StarCraft. So I'd be watching like GSL and stuff more. Well, that was a little bit later, obviously, when I was like 11, 12, 13. Right yeah, now. No. We're taking back this. It's, it's all right exchange. Yeah. Kind of wasting your smoke right here. Going for a fight that's not very advantageous to you. What? Oh my god. Probably not the best to fight right there. And now you have to wait for a flash for a teammate. Stay alive, Warren. There's definitely gonna be a lot of stuff here, I'd say. I'd say if you already go back, I can probably save more. So I don't know exactly if this is like a match or a scrim. I can't like hear comms that well, but I mean, it's definitely gonna be different if you're talking about pugging versus scrimming or like playing like in a match. Because right now, like if you're like the main B guy, like if you were gonna hold this angle even right here, like you you, you should be like completely focused on like killing this guy that's gonna peek you on the bottom of the grates. And if you're not, then like I would say you should probably go a little bit further back so he can't see you on the angle. I don't know exactly for CS2 on this position anymore if like how visible it is for the guy in the bottom to see through the grates but i know in general it's i i think that if you're focused on it you should be able to kill this guy like instantly right here and, not. and then okay. now you just kind of like if, if you're going to go for that spray you just reload it in the open while going to the double box so if anyone just peeked you which i would assume if that guy's fighting you hard that there's probably more guys b 
so you just exposed yourself to dying so you should have died already anyone that would have punished you so you just really really open went to double you still have your smoke your teammate has no nades and he's playing at the wood and you have a flash and a smoke right now i would already be thinking all right let's go for a flash check so when I, like a flash check is just like flashing for him to like check a spot and kill everybody so you should be moving back double right now offering a flash to purple so that's already what should be happening this is a dude you yeah this is incredible <laughs> blue you're alone and then here you just pals already pals already so when you you just you just jiggled close to the box, so if anyone was actually picking you, he would have owned you because you he would have saw you first and he probably would have killed you. And then you just wasted your smoke. You're throwing your smoke just kind of nowhere, nowhere useful, honestly. <laughs> and you're not really helping your teammate. And now you're going back to the spot where they knew you were before and they didn't know that you crossed because no one saw you. So now you just, you put yourself in the same bad position you were in like five seconds ago. And now you have no smoke. So now you can't help yourself at all. And now you would have to be communicating to Blue for you to get a flash from him. Like you would have to be like hiding right now. You'd have to be hiding and you'd have to be just like holding the boost on the wood, like crouch, just holding the boost. And you have to wait for your teammates to come help you now because now you're in a terrible position. And re 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 peeking like about, this, like yeah. What are you about three, four re peeks? Nah, this no. this is not good at all. Like a good player would definitely just take you down. Like if if he's already on the angle and you're peeking into him, especially through the wood, like he or not wood, the great, like you would probably be dying. And also, you have no idea if anyone's just running up the stairs on you. What? Oh probably should have got that kill. And you peek close to the wall again when they know you're there. Probably should have died again. Dead eye born. Yeah, you. It's kind of tough now because you have no nades. So moving back on that angle is what you should have done earlier and just like crouch like kind of like to the back right because usually the guy in the bottom can't really see you and then you would just you would just kind of be like holding that angle and like kind of waiting for like your teammate to come help you or give you a flash but luckily you got like a kill on that guy there to where to a so man maybe like they're going back to A. I probably yeah, wouldn't have left completely, but yeah. I can't hear the comms very well. They're probably on A or something. If they're not on, if they're not on A and they're not yeah, planting, maybe. I would go. I would have stayed window this whole time, but I'm not sure exactly the comms. Oh yeah, okay, so they would be. Okay, so go back then. Okay, because I wasn't sure on like what's happening with the comms, but like going to this position here, like as the B guy, like maybe? you should really never be leaving until the bomb is planted. Because even if like one guy is A and he's throwing like a nade or a smoke or something, that could just be giving a sound cue for like the mid guy to start walking up and go window and kill you. So as the B guy, you literally don't, you don't leave here until the bomb is planted. Because not only are you responsible for getting info if they're going B, but you're also responsible for the guy that's lurking out mid. So if this guy mid just like walked up window, he could have actually just killed you. Like you, you completely lost info on B and mid and this spot that you're holding is an advantage for the T that's coming out mid because he has a right eye angle and he's further away from the wall. So when you go closer to this like little barrel, this like tan barrel thing on the right, it's actually not a good fight for you. If he peeked you, you die. Maybe. And you lost info. So you should have stayed window the whole time. If you're if yeah. you're gonna give up B like that, if there is something that's happening, you should still stay either window. So you make sure that no mid guy is lurking up and killing the A guy, and you keep info on both B and mid. You're saying that's everything it. I was gonna say, dude. So I'm glad you're saying it. <laughs> yep, planning B. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for this clip. I, I think it's really interesting when it when it comes to probably a lot of your critique for more casual gameplay like I feel like it's going to be a common recurrence where people with good flashy aim somehow hit a good clip but there's going to be so much critique because there's so much thought process that you guys put into it at a different level it's, it's very interesting you know like this is the kind of clip yeah. that if I somehow hit I'm sending my homies like yo you should have seen me dude you know <laughs> We saw you give an incredibly thoughtful response to Nate Shot, of course, and you give good advice uh, in general. But when you watch most players play, even from a casual standpoint, what is like the things that you typically notice like everyone could improve on? I think that the main thing, which I also said to Nate Shot, is that when people are playing, they're not playing with like an in, with, with like a uh, purpose exactly. They're not like dissecting different parts of their game and like getting down to the nitty gritty of it. And like when you listen to people in actual sports, like talking about their game or you listen to like Kobe like talk about you know his footwork and he's like watching different games and seeing like the different plays that he can do the different type of you know XYZ like micro things that he can do you don't really hear that type of stuff especially like in the NA scene across all esports and I think that's honestly why we kind of struggle uh, across most games is that I don't think that everyone's dissecting the game as much as they can be and then when they're playing people think that just playing 10 to 12 games 
or sorry, not just games, 10 to 12 hours of gameplay, which could be many, many games, that they're getting more out of it than if they just had something that they were really focusing on for, you know, six to eight hours of gameplay. This is what we'll, we'll end on. Last one, last one. The hostage Thanks situation, Alicia. Let's go. <laughs> I used to play this all the time. Back in the mod. Nice. Dude, this corridor is so ridiculous. Dude, what is this spot? We were saying he's just cheesing. <laughs> he's just waiting. I think that you can probably hear the sound cue on the hostage getting taken. Oh, really? This just feels like Call of Duty at this point. We were just sitting in a corner with a shotgun. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, you can definitely hear the sound cue. That's so cheese. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's actually insane. Oh my god. This is the shotgun meta. I would never buy a shot up though. I hate that gun. I feel like five of the eight kills were like assisted. That's why I was doing the one shot, but, but yeah. Oh my god, we're... this first round in two. That's pretty funny. So nice. then do you disagree with the boy Shroudy Rowdy who says that uh that CS2 is the last game in CS? Like, like I mean he seems pretty set that CS is dying with CS2 and it's the last one. Have you seen that clip? Yeah, I mean I think that he just likes to be a little bit negative for some reason about CS. I'm not sure why, but I think that he's just is being negative about it but i mean valve really can't count to three so yeah <laughs> but i mean we've had cs go out for so long already now like cs2 is probably just going to be something that's going to be out for a very long time anyway and that's probably that's probably what their intent is where each game is 10 to 15 years based off of their capabilities of the engine like i don't even know but maybe in the next cs will be like cs 2.5 so who knows? They can't really get to three. Yeah, he's baiting. He's he's eventually going to be right by some measure or another. Whatever they what they just yeah. And it's gonna yeah, come I think that I think that people just like uh like negative attention. Like it gets more impressions and clicks and everything. So I don't think that he genuinely believes that. We're gonna follow up with this just because we talked about Shroud, and now we're gonna bounce over for a second uh, to Simple, who said that it was a shit game and that people shouldn't even play it right now. <laughs> uh, what I mean, are your that's thoughts what on saying. that? Really? That's what I'd be saying if I was a competitive player and I want all my opponents to suck, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, obviously, yeah, I mean, obviously he's he's just like upset that like we're losing more than we're gaining right now. Yeah. Like it's not as uh, iron tight as like we would have liked as professionals for the release because, you know, obviously it's going to be impacting us the most where we're playing for a lot of money. And if there's like a bug or something feels bad, it's going to affect us. And that obviously doesn't feel fun. But, you know, it is what it is, you know? We just have to deal with it and just play the best of our abilities. And that's going to do it for episode number one of Fixing Matches with iBuy Power. want to thank all of you guys for watching so much and hope you guys enjoyed this kind of different content here on the channel. Also, prepare for episode number two. We are trying to lock in the Rat King himself, that being Sir Smoothia. We're going to try and contact other CS pros, of course, throughout this series, but we hope you all enjoyed. And remember, submit your CS2 clips in the Discord link down below or when I ask for them on Twitter and be entered for an easy giveaway for a sick one. $120 mouse pad, RGB mouse pad through iBuyPower. Until next time, take care of yourselves. We'll see you back here for episode number two.